Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. We welcome you once again to Liberty Pentecostal Church of the Apostolic Faith. We thank God for another beautiful Sunday morning. Amen. In the land of the living. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. So once again, we welcome you into our Sunday morning virtual service. Amen. This is one of the days that we are actual virtual. We don't have an in-person service today. So we thank you for joining us and tuning in. We are grateful to have you in our presence one more time. We thank God again for one more beautiful day, one Sunday morning. Amen. Where we woke up this morning with our minds stayed on Jesus. So thank you for tuning in. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started right away. In the meantime, uh, all the information to contact us is on the screen. So please feel free to contact us uh, should you need our services in the Lord. Amen? Amen. So let's go ahead and open up our Sunday morning service with prayer, and then we'll go into the word of the Lord on today. So I'm delighted once again to be before your presence, and I thank God for you. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, in the beautiful name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we come before your presence this morning, Lord, thanking you for the opportunity, amen, and access into your presence, Lord Jesus. We thank you for all that you have done. You kept us through the night, Lord Jesus. Woke us up this morning with our minds and hearts stayed on you, Lord Jesus. Thanking you once again for this day, a day that we haven't seen before, Lord, yeah, that we Lord. might praise you in the land of the living. Lord, yes. we thank you for such a great salvation on today, Lord Jesus. Thank you for giving us the understanding and the wisdom and uh, knowing what your word tells us to do, Lord Jesus. Thank you for calling us into your kingdom. Yes. Lord, we ask right now this day, because we know that this world is in turmoil, Lord, we remember those that are in Ukraine. Lord, we plead, we cry out to you, Lord Jesus, for yeah, those Lord. that are in Ukraine, Lord Jesus, that you would bless them, that you would yeah. strengthen them, that you would protect yes. them, Lord Jesus, that you would save them and deliver them, Lord Jesus. Remember yeah. the households there in Ukraine, Lord Jesus. Remember the people there, Lord Jesus. Be their protector. Deliver yeah. them, Lord Jesus. Yeah. Remember your people Israel that are in Ukraine, Lord Jesus. Remember the Christians that are in Ukraine, Lord we ask for your blessings and your yes. protection. We thank you for those that you will yet save in Ukraine. But Lord, we ask that you cause that war to cease, that you will protect those people. We cry out yes. for our neighbors, Ukraine, Lord Jesus, even though they're across the world, Lord Jesus, they're yes. human beings. And we ask for your protection yes. on them, Lord. Send your salvation and send your deliverance. Lord, we ask right now for things that are going on even here at home in the United States, that you would bless our leaders, Lord Jesus. Yes. Bless our leaders. Bless President Biden. Bless, bless Kamala Harris, Vice President Kamala Harris. Lord, remember all of the politicians. Lord, bless the United States of America, Lord Jesus. Bless this great state. Lord Jesus, we ask your blessings upon every person that you've called, Lord, to preach your gospel, Lord Jesus, that you would strengthen us, strengthen us and that you would bless us. Lord, bless every child of God and those that desire to be children of God. Yes. Lord, send forth deliverance and salvation. Lord, we ask that you remember the homeless and those that are needy on today, everyone yes. who's drug addicted, Lord, that you would deliver them, put it in their hearts and minds to want to be delivered, Lord Jesus. And Lord, we want want to also thank you for the great and the wonderful things that you have done, Lord Jesus. We don't want to just always lay our petitions before you as if you've done nothing. Lord, you've yes. done great and mighty things. Lord, you've answered our prayers, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Lord, we've called on you in times. And you have heard our prayer. Yeah. And we thank you because you are a prayer answering God, Lord Jesus. Thank we you. thank you for the deliverances that you've given to our children, our loved ones, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the yeah. souls that you've saved, our loved ones, Lord. Thank you for those that you're going to save, Lord Jesus. Yes. Lord, we thank you for the wonderful and mighty things you've done in our lives as your children, Lord Jesus. How thank you it. sent forth healing, you provided, Lord Jesus. You made ways out of no way, Lord Jesus. And we thank you for that. We thank you for the joy that you give. We thank you yeah. for the peace that you've given. Yes. We thank you for your righteousness, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your great love whereby you have loved us, Lord thank Jesus. You. Lord, we ask that you remember those that are backslidden today, Lord. Draw them yes. back to you with cords of love, and we'll be careful to give your name the praise. Lord, we thank you because you are a wonderful God, yes. and we find no fault at all in you, and we're just glad to be able to come before your presence, Lord, and say we thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
Amen. Once again, we thank you for tuning in to Liberty Pentecostal Church of the Apostolic Faith. Amen. And we'll go into the word of the Lord. Now, we may not be uh, long before you on this morning, uh, but we do have words from the Lord whereby we may be encouraged in the Lord. Amen. So if you have your Bibles, we're going to turn, um, first of all, to the book of Psalms. And we're going to read a few verses out of uh, Psalms 27, and then from there we're going to go to the book of Philippians. Amen? Amen. Psalms chapter 27. And since we have time this morning, why don't we just read through it? I'm going to pull out the verses that we're going to draw our theme from today. Uh, but I'll just read through it in its entirety. It's a, um, somewhat of a short uh, chapter. Psalms 27, we're going to read verse 1, says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host shall encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war should arise against me, and this will I be confident. One thing of the Lord, one thing have I desired of the Lord, excuse me, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For, in other words, because in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock, and now shall my head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me, and answer me. When thou saidest, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. Verse 10, when my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over to the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. So let me read uh, verses 13 and 14 one more time. It says, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Amen? Amen. Let's go to Philippians chapter number 1. Philippians chapter number 1, we're going to read one verse, uh, verse 6. And it reads, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. And from those portions of scriptures, we draw our topic on today. Things may happen along the way, but it ain't over till God says it's over. Amen? Things may happen along the way, but it ain't over till God says it's over. We know that's not proper English. Uh, so things may happen along the way. So many things may happen along the way, but it ain't over until God says it's over. Amen. So uh, we started off in the book of Psalms, uh, Psalms 27, a psalm penned by the sweet psalmist of Israel known as King David. Amen. 
Amen. And so he started off with Psalm 27, making a declaration about the Lord. He said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? So we know King David was called of the Lord, amen, to be the king of Israel. And he made this declaration. He said, the Lord. So he put the Lord foremost in his life. He know his life was taken care of by the Lord and the Lord was his savior. Amen. He said, the Lord is my light, my God, and my salvation. In other words, whom shall I fear? God had called him to be a warrior. Amen. He came, the Lord called him to fight his battles. Amen. And God is the one that strengthened David and equipped David to fight the battles of the Lord. Amen. Giving uh, victory to uh, the nation of Israel. Amen. Over all of their enemies. So David was a warrior. So he couldn't be faint hearted, but he let us know who his confidence was in. He let us know that the Lord was his light, his guide, and the Lord was his savior. So no matter what type of uh, trouble he was in, he knew that the Lord was going to be his deliverer and his salvation. And so with King David being a warrior, amen, called to fight the Lord's battles, we know that he had many enemies, amen. Not only did he have enemies outside of Israel, but he had enemies inside of Israel also. We know his predecessor, uh, Saul, uh, became jealous and he tried to destroy him. Amen. But when God uh, kept his promise to David, he became king just like God said that he would. And so he began to fight the Lord's battles. Amen. Even more. And he did what the Lord told him to do. But uh, David had a declaration saying, no matter what happens to me, I'm going to look to the Lord. I'm going to trust in the Lord because he's my light and he's my salvation. He said in verse 10, he said, when my father Father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. So he had the Lord as his number one support system. Amen. Yeah, I know David loved his mother, loved his father, but he was just making a point that if people in relationships down here on this earth, should they fail me, God is there for me. God has my back. Amen. So sometimes people may forsake us. Amen. Sometimes uh, people will, I mean, despite their best efforts, they cannot be there to support us. Uh, uh, but with that, our life and our calling and God's purpose on our life is not canceled out just because we are forsaken by certain people. Amen. So David made it plain. He said, when my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. So it doesn't matter who fails you, no matter who fails me, no matter who failed King David, he knew that the Lord always had his back. And so his life's calling was not canceled just because his mother or his father forsook him. Amen. He told the Lord, he said, teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in the plain path because David knew he had enemies. So he said, lead me in the plain path. Amen. Because of mine enemies. In other words, lead me in a, a safe passage, a path where I can escape or where I won't be harmed because the enemies all around, but you know how to guide me through. Amen. And then he went on to say, deliver me not over to the will of mine enemies, because we know that if we have enemies, enemies have a will and their will is that you and I would be destroyed. But that's not God's will. But David prayed. He said, don't deliver me into the will of my enemies. Lord, protect me and save me. And he went on to say, why? He said, for because false witnesses are risen up against me. And so he knew that people were lying on him and, and saying things against him that were not true. So he heard something. He had to know something. He said, false witnesses are risen up against me and such as breathe out cruelty. So they wanted to destroy King David. And so he went on and he made his petition to the Lord. Amen. But he went to say in verse 13 and 14, he said, I had fainted. In other words, I would have fainted. I would have given up. I would have stopped. He said, what? Unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So because of all these things that were happening to David along the way, he, and it was so much crazy stuff going on, he said he would have fainted. He would have given up unless he had believed it. So we as the people of God have to believe God. Whatever God has told us, whatever he's instructed us, whatever he said he will do, whatever he's promised us, whatever place he's put us in, he's going to keep us and he's going to protect us. Amen. 
Amen. But we have to believe by faith that God is going to be our protection and that he's going to be our faith. So we can't give up because we're dependent and we're trusting on the Lord. So David said, I would have fainted. I would have given up. I would have stopped. I would have quit in this kingship. I would have just turned my back and went somewhere else. He said, unless I believed. I would have given up if I didn't believe that God was with me. So we have to believe that God is with us. We have to believe God is for us. Amen. We. This is no time to faint. This is no time for us to give up and go back, but this is the time for us to look to the Lord and trust in the Lord. But David said, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So in this Christian journey in this walk with God. I mean, just like in the Old Testament, he walked with God. We as Christians in the New Testament walk with God. Those of us that have been born again, we have to keep going forth by faith, amen, and not give up. He said, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness in the land of the living, amen. So his life was in danger constantly, amen. Not the enemies outside and enemies inside, amen. But he had the faith to believe that if God called me to this position, this kingship, that he called me for a purpose and that he was going to fulfill his purpose in my life. So I'm not going to faint. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to turn back. You know, I'm going to look to the Lord. He said, wait. And then he admonished the people that would read the Psalm 27. He said, wait on the Lord. So not only do we need faith as the people of God, because things will happen along the way and things will go a different way than what we expect. But we have to continue to look to the Lord and believe in God and have faith in God. He said, wait on the Lord. Amen. Be of good courage. Be encouraged. And he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. So David admonished the readers of this psalm. He said, wait on the Lord. So not only do we have to have faith in God and what he's called us to do in his purpose and knowing that he is the one that called us and he's going to bring things to pass. He was the one that was helping David get victory over his enemies. Amen. And judging the people of Israel. God is the one that called him to that position. So he said, the Lord is my life and my salvation. So he knew who called him and he knew who was going to protect him and keep him. So he admonished the people to wait on the Lord. So sometimes we get in situations and things are happening. We have to wait on the Lord. So it requires patience. Not only do our walk with the Lord requires faith in his calling on our lives, but we need patience. Amen. He said, wait on the Lord. Not only are we waiting on the Lord, but he said, be of good courage. Amen. Be encouraged. And it said, he shall strengthen thine heart. And he said again, wait. So said it twice. Amen. Wait. So have patience. Wait on the Lord. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Amen. So he had to have that faith. And he had to have that patience throughout his kingship. So we know that he had enemies when he was doing right. But at some point, David also failed the Lord. That's why I say many things may happen along the way while we are uh, fulfilling God's calling on our life. Uh, but it's not over until God says it's over. So those enemies wanted to destroy him, you know, when he was fighting the Lord's battle. But God didn't let them kill him. Amen. So it wasn't over, even though the enemy was firing shots and trying to destroy him. It wasn't over because it wasn't God's time for David's work to be over, amen. And we know that David, along the way, amen, in this life's journey, he failed the Lord, amen. He actually failed and he committed adultery and he uh, killed Uriah. And so the Lord still didn't uh, put him out of the kingship, even though he did those things. The Lord forgave him. And so many things may happen along the way, but it's not over until God says it's over. So he sinned against the Lord. So God didn't say it was over for him because he sinned. He said, I forgive you. He said, but the sword won't depart out of your house. But we know what happened with David. Uh, the Lord allowed um, for his son to chase him out of the uh, throne, amen, pretty much to speak, chase him out of the kingship for a temporary, for a small point. And so he was running, you know, for his life. But we know God restored him. So it wasn't over, even though Absalom chased him out of, you know, the kingship, but it wasn't over. His kingship wasn't over because God is the one that called him. That's why we say things may happen along the way, amen, but it ain't over until God says it's over. So David might have thought that it was over, but he still trusted in the Lord. He he ran for his life, but he trusted in the Lord. He knew that God was faithful. Amen. So he said, I would have fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. He had to wait on the Lord to restore him to the kingship. Amen. Amen. But God is a restorer. So it was not over until God says it's over. So things might happen, might get displaced for a little while, but it's not over until God says it's over. Amen. And even on, uh, in, on the secular spectrum, we know God is the one that sits up 
um, people, leaders over countries, and God takes them down. Amen. We remember King Nebuchadnezzar. He was the king of Babylon, um, king of Babylon. And so what happened with him? He got lifted up in pride. Amen. So God had to remove him for a short time so that he would know to humble himself. So Nebuchadnezzar was taken from the throne. Amen. Due to pride and due to disobedience, but God restored him. So when he, after the time seven years had passed over, you know, he had put out there and he was like a beast, but God brought him back in. God restored him. So again, it's not over until God says it's over. Even though he was disobedient, he was lifted up in pride. God still put him back on the throne of Babylon. Amen. So it, things might happen along the way. People might get in sin, amen, people might get lifted up in pride and be disobedient, but it's still up to God whether or not God is going to restore that person or it's over with. So it's not over unless God says it's over. So we see here in both of these cases, they were restored to their place and their position. Amen. We remember Lazarus. Amen. The Bible lets us know there was a certain man that was sick named Lazarus in Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. And it was that Mary that anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto Jesus, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And, of, and I am glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent that ye might believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, unto his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. Then when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave for four days already. So it doesn't matter how long you've been in your situation. If God says it's not over, it's not over. So here we're talking about Lazarus' life. Amen. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth. He was bound hand and foot with grave clothes and his face was bound with a napkin. So things can look like they were just, I mean, things are just dead. Amen. And they've covered things up. Things been shut up and shut down. Amen. He's got grave clothes. He's bound hand and foot and he's got grave clothes on. But Jesus said unto them, loose him and let him go. And in other words, it was not his time to stay in that grave permanently. Amen. So he told, he said, the purpose of this is that I might be glorified. This sickness is not unto death. So sometimes we go through situations. Things happen along the way. Amen. But it's not over until God says it's over. So it's not over until Jesus says it's over. So even though Lazarus died from that sickness or he, his physical body laid down, but Jesus has the power to speak to your situation. Jesus has the power to speak to my situation. No, no matter how long it's been laying dormant and he knows how to bring it back to life. Amen. Because it's not over until God says it's over. So if God made promises, it's not over until God says it's over over. Amen. So God is the one that says when things are over and done. So we have to believe God and we have to look to God because we know he has one of the greatest testimonies that have ever been told. Amen. And it will be told forever. Amen. Jesus Christ, the son of God. We know that the enemy thought that they were going to destroy him. Amen. They falsely accused him. They arrested him. Amen. They took him to court and they lied on him. Not only that, but he was turned over to the Roman soldiers to be crucified. Amen. But we know the story. It's not over until God says it's over. Because even though Jesus Christ was crucified, he was laid in the grave. Amen. But three days later, he rose from the grave. Amen. So he ever lives to make intercession for the people of God. So it's not over. Their enemy can't hold anybody down if God say, loose them and let them go. If God wants life or he wants to speak life to any situation. He has all power to do that. So no matter what the enemy might try, no matter what the enemy might do, it's not over until God says it's over. And so Jesus Christ rose from the grave. Amen. And the grave couldn't hold him down. And he ever lives to make intercession for the people of God. Amen. And so we remember Peter. Also, we remember his ministry and his life. God called him as a disciple. Amen. God called Peter. No other person called Peter to be a disciple other than Jesus Christ. So when we look at our life, only God has control of our life. When we look at our ministry, our calling, only God has control of that ultimately. So he's the one that has to say the final say so on whether or not it continues or whether or not it ends. Amen. 
And so we know that Peter said that he loved the Lord, but the Lord knew that Peter would deny him three times. And so when uh, the cock crew, Peter looked at the Lord and he went out and he wept. He wept bitterly, the Bible says, because he thought that he was right where he needed to be, but Jesus Christ knew what was in him. Amen. But Jesus Christ restored Peter. He's When he rose from the grave, he said, go and tell your brother and Peter that I'm going to meet you all in Galilee. So just because Peter denied the Lord, did not cancel out his calling into ministry, did not cancel out his God's purpose for his life. Amen. And so we saw Peter on the day of Pentecost because preaching boldly the name Jesus Christ, amen, whereby 3,000 souls were saved on that day. So God is not canceling out people's ministry unless that's what he wants to do. And sometimes people look at it and say, so-and-so did this, so-and-so did that. But at the end of the day, these people, we are God's servant. We are not servants. We are to serve mankind, but we are not men's servants. We are servants of the Lord, amen? And so D Peter denied the Lord three times, uh, but his calling into the ministry was not over. Amen. God used him mightily. So it's not over until God says it's over. Many things may happen along the way in our lives again, but it's not over unless God says it's over. And so Peter denied the Lord. He repented. Amen. And he got, when he went over to Galilee to meet the Lord, he was reconnecting with the Lord. God restored him. Amen. And told him, when you are converted, strengthen your brethren. Amen. And we know that's not the only time that God delivered Peter. We know that once he actually started working for the Lord, preaching the gospel. Amen. The enemy was not happy about that. So King Herod was not happy. Amen. The Jewish people that didn't believe in the Lord, they were persecuting the disciples. Amen. But King Herod wanted to get some more points with the people. And he saw that he had uh, killed James. And so he had planned to kill uh, Peter also, and so they had taken Peter, amen, and put him in bounds. They had had him in prison, amen, but we know what happened. It says, it be, behold, the angel of the Lord came upon Peter, and a light shined in the prison, because Herod had plans to kill him, amen. So sometimes people think, well, this person has been arrested. It's over and it's done with, but God is a deliverer, amen, and he is a restorer, amen. The enemy tried to lock the people of God up, but God knows how to set them free. So just because people people are locked up doesn't mean their ministry is over. And so the Lord sent the angel, the angel of the Lord came unto him and light, uh, light shined in the prison and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up saying, arise up quickly. And his chains fell from off his hands. So even though he'd been bound, God loosed those chains that was on his hands. And the angel said unto him, gird thyself and bind on those your sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, cast thy garment about thee and follow me. And he went out and he followed the angel and wist not that it was true, which was done by the angel, but thought that he saw a vision. He didn't even, he's like, this can't be real. I'm just dreaming. You know, he said, then uh, when they were past the first and the second ward, they came into the iron gate and that leadeth them to the city, which opened to them of its own accord. Amen. Amen. When they went to the gate, don't you know God got power to just open up gates? Amen. Uh -huh. And they went out and passed on through on one street and forth with the angel departed from him. Amen. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, now I know of a surety that the Lord hath sent his angel and he hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the Jews. So the Jews expected for him to be uh, hanged or killed. However, he was, Herod was going to do it. Herod thought that he was going to kill Peter, but it's not over until God says it's over. So it wasn't over for Peter at that time, even though he had been uh, put in prison, he was in chains and everything, but it's not over. Even though things happen along the way, it's not over until God says it's over. And the same thing happened with Paul, the great apostle Paul. Amen. We know that he, uh, preached mightily the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so we know he had to be let down in the basket to get away because the Jews had planned to kill him. And so we know that he had also been arrested. We know at certain points that he had been stoned. The Bible tells us that he was at one point he was stoned and it said that with these sins, they scarcely restrained the people that they had not done sacrifice unto him. And there, well, no, let's go back. Let's go. I'm sorry. Let's go back. <laughs> they had different spirits. They had not done sacrifice unto them. And there came thither where they were certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium who persuaded the people. And after they persuaded the people against Paul, 
they stoned Paul and they drew him out of the city, supposing that he had been dead. So they stoned Paul and they drew him out of the city. They thought they had stoned him to death. But the next verse says, how be it? Amen. As the disciples stood around about him, he rose up. So they thought he was dead, but they didn't kill him because God didn't allow them to kill him. Amen. And he rose up and he came into the city and the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derby. Amen. So the enemy always wants to destroy the people of God, but it's not over until God says it's over. Amen. God is not going to let them kill us until he says it's time. If he says it's time. Amen. And we know by the many testimonies of Paul, amen, he ended up being arrested and so he appealed to Caesar, amen, and so we know he made it through the storm, amen, and so that they, that dangerous storm, Eurachlodon, that could have killed him, they thought it was over, amen, but it wasn't over because God, the angel of the Lord told Paul, nobody's going to be lost because of this storm, you're going to get there, you're going to go where you need to go because you need to still present uh, Jesus Christ to kings, amen, and so on their way though, there was a shipwreck and we know what happened and so when they were shipwrecked they were all on this island and so they went forth and then they began to gather up sticks and things to make a fire to warm themselves and then it lets us know that well Paul was putting the sticks in the fire that there was a serpent or a beast came out of the fire and latched on to Paul, amen, and he also, not only did he latch on, but he bit Paul, but it says, and Paul shook off the beast into the fire, so the viper that came out of the fire latched on to Paul, amen, but he did, what he did is he shook it off, and the Bible says Paul felt no harm, isn't that amazing what God will do for his people, how be it, they looked uh, when they, when he should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly, but after they looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their mind and said that he was a god. So the, the people that were on that particular island, they knew that that beast, that uh, viper that came out of that fire was venomous and he was deadly. Amen. And they saw that thing latch on to Paul. And so they said, well, this man just escaped this great storm, but uh, fate will not let him live because he must be somebody evil for him to have this viper to come out and, and latch on to him. So they knew that normally when that happened, that a person will fall down dead from the poison. But Paul had no harm. He shook the beast off. So again, many things happen along this way, but it's not over until God says it's over. So different things might happen to us as the people of God. Amen. Where well, people think that we would die, but it's not over until God says it's over because God had a work for Paul to complete. Amen. Amen. And so the same thing, we just go through ministry. Evidently, God wants to encourage someone today in ministry. Amen. We see Peter. We see Paul. Amen. And so we remember John Mark. Amen. Paul, John Mark was called of God. And the Bible lets us know, and some days after Paul said to Barnabas, let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of God to see how they do. And Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mark. But Paul thought it not good to take with the, him with them who departed uh, from them from Pamphylia and went not with them to the work. So he started out on the journey with Paul and them, but he didn't complete the work with them. And the, sin, and the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder one from the other. So Barnabas took Mark and sailed into Cyprus, and Paul chose Silas and departed being recommended by the brethren and to the grace of God. So here we are, have brethren working together in the ministry, amen, having contention among one another. So just because people have disagreements don't mean that a person's ministry is over because one person had a disagreement because we have to remember who called John Mark. Paul didn't call John Mark, amen, but God called John Mark. But we see later uh, in Timothy, uh, Paul wrote, and he said, only Luke is with me. He said, take Mark, and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. So it's not over until God says it's over. Even though there was contention between brethren, the Bible lets us know that Mark was still working in the ministry. Amen. And Paul summoned him, said, bring him with you because he's profitable for me in the ministry. So people can have disagreements, but, but what did the Bible say? Let brotherly love continue. So they continued on in the ministry. Amen. And so we just have to know whatever goes on in our life, uh, things may happen uh, in our life. Things may happen in our ministry. We might get sick. 
I might, you know, be look like a sickness unto death, but God, God say this sickness is not unto death, but it's for the glory of God. So it's not over until God says it's over. No matter how bad the doctors tell you it is, uh, doctors might give you five days to live, but if God say you're gonna live past five days, guess what? You're gonna live past five days. Days. So it ain't over. Life is not over until God says it's over. Ministry and our callings are not over until God says it's over. It's not about what a man says, but it's about what God says. Amen. So in uh, Corinthians, we see uh, Paul wrote here, he said, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. We're cast down, but not destroyed. Amen. So we have to always remember that we can be confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work in us will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Because it's God that calls us. He's our light and he's our salvation. Amen. Who shall we fear? We're like David, you know. So we have to be confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you, he which has begun a good work in me, it will... Uh, in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So doesn't matter what happens along the way. It's not over until God says it's over. Amen. Let us not be weary in well-doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. But we have to have the testimony of David. He said, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So we have to believe that we're going to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen. And so we have to wait on the Lord. We have to be of good courage. Amen. And Jesus Christ is going to strengthen our heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Amen. So it's not over until God says it's over. That's the message for today. Uh, be blessed. Be encouraged. Amen. Be strengthened. It's not over until God says it's over. So no matter what happens along the way, if God didn't say it was over, don't worry about it. Amen. Look to see the Lord in the land of the living to complete our calling in him. God bless you.